Retilio Romero is our guest today on Spotlight. You're going to ask what he does. I had two, too. I'd never heard the name Rutilio Romero. He's from New Mexico or lives there now. But the big thing that he does is teach happiness. He said back 17 or 18 years ago that 85% of all ills are mental. They're caused by psychological conditions or mental conditions. The doctors laughed at him, but they're not laughing today. And we're going to find out why here on Spotlight with Rutilio Romero. Thousands of students all over the United States have attended uh, Rutilio Romero's personal happiness conferences. I'm I question a little bit uh, the motives of the personal happiness conferences. I did question them until I met uh, Dr. Romero, who is a doctor of chiropractic. I want to launch into this in the most logical way by saying, back in 1960, how did you get started on this effort? Well, in 1960, Don, I was given three months to live. I had cancer of the left shoulder. The ball of the left shoulder was completely eaten up, and there was a just a fine film of calcium left when I went and had x-rays made, and the doctors gave me three months to live. I went to the country, and you know when you've got one foot in the grave and one on a banana peel, you've got to do a lot of thinking and soul searching. Yes. And I came to understand as I lived in the country that I really had lived on hell resentment most of my life. See, my mother was Irish and my dad was Mexican and my grandfather Higgins resented the fact that my mother wanted to marry a Mexican but mm -hmm. in spite of his objections they ran off and got married you see that meant that my mother had gotten married out of the church which was very traditional mm -hmm. it was a mortal sin and she had disobeyed her parents well it was in that uh, environment that I was conceived and from the time of conception, I knew I was unwanted by my mother and my grandfather. So I grew up resenting that fact very much. Even though I became a doctor and helped thousands of people, uh, the resentment was there eating away at me and finally manifested itself into a disease. You're saying then that the mental condition that you suffered, that is the resentment, That's caused right. the disease, right. the physical disease. Right, because it's a it causes a pH imbalance in the chemistry of the body which causes the disease factor. There are medical doctors I know who claim that most mental sicknesses are chemical imbalances, that they are not psychologically caused at all, even though the psychological cause may be back here, mm -hmm. that the chemical imbalance occurs that causes a person to be, say, schizophrenic. Right. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. You can see that without uh, being a doctor or having had the training. You can take an ordinary man that's a very beautiful person down to the corner bar and give him about six double shots of liquor, and that intoxicates his brain, and in a few minutes he's beaten up the whole place. It's changed and altered his consciousness through the intoxication. And that's the same thing that happens with a person when you're angry all the time or resentful or full of hate or vengeance, we are creating the same type of chemistry in our body. So you're saying that we mentally cause most of our ills. I really truly believe that and I see it happening because when we have our students change their attitudes about themselves and get onto the personal happiness understanding, we see those conditions change. Let me point out too, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. Yes. But you are not as a doctor of chiropractic, plugging chiropractic medicine at all? No, I'm not. I'm not. It's just a part of the healing system is all. What I'm interested in more than anything else is getting people to get their heads on straight. That's where it's at. And so you've given up active practice as a chiropractor, I would presume? No, I still practice two to three days in the office a week, and then I travel on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I still have many patients that were not able to be healed because of the fact that they did not change their attitudes through chiropractic and changing their attitudes 
regain their health back, just like I did. How do you go about changing a person's attitude in a symposium? You've got a whole group of people. Right. And you're talking in an auditorium or a meeting room. How do you change their attitudes without working with them individually? Well, the first thing that we do there, Don, is that there are basic reasons for people having the attitude they have. In fact, there are four basic emotions which man uses constantly to try to survive under the law of survival, mm -hmm. and that's hate, anger, resentment, and fear. Now, we have found the basis for the beginning of these emotions in each individual, and as you teach people to understand the basis of it, where it's coming from, then you can certainly help them to change these attitudes. You have some dimensions listed here on yes. this sheet. You say there is a mental dimension, a physical dimension, the social dimension, the financial dimension, and the spiritual dimension. Yes, Don. May we take those one at a time, and let's start at the bottom. Okay. The spiritual dimension. I don't say that that's the least important, but that's at the bottom of the list. Why? Our attitude, it says here, about our creator and creation. Right. How must we change that in order to achieve personal happiness? Well, the very first thing that we have, remember, we're not interested in, in teaching or changing a person's religion. It's only to help them understand that we are a son and daughter of life. We cannot deny that, whether we call it God or call it whatever name we want to. But we are a son and daughter of life. And it is our relationship with that life, that inborn life that we have, which is the life given for us, that we, if we learn how to cooperate with it, can restore us to health and bring us life. So it is our attitude that most of us, because of conditioning, feel that we're unworthy because we've been sinful people, we've been told that we come from evil and things like this, that if we really believe in, in a true God, a God of love, uh, we have to overcome that conditioning. Would it be oversimplification to say that you want people to feel comfortable with themselves spiritually? Oh, definitely. That is not op oversimplification. That is truth. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel yourself comfortably spiritually, well, you're always feeling guilty, and everyone can make you feel guilty. And we want you to be master of yourself, Don. How many people come to you, Dr. Romero, and say that they think you're a kook, that they think you're so far out that you have left the uh, mainstream of life in your teachings. Well, in 1960, Don, when I first came out with the idea that 85% of the world was sick because they were mentally thinking wrong, that doesn't mean that they were insane, but we have negative thoughts constantly. I found 80% of, well, about 98% of the time, most people are thinking negatively, not only of themselves, but of the world. And then most of the people thought I was kooky. Mm -hmm. Today I'm an accepted fact that what I've been saying is right. In fact, some of the uh, medical uh, profession is saying that 95% of the thinking is causing people to be sick. We'll follow that a little bit more, and we'll Why? talk about your other dimensions, specifically the financial dimension, as we work from the bottom of the list up Beautiful. with Rutilio Romero, our guest on Spotlight today.